It is, once again, Friday afternoon. Time to devote another weekend to see what we can get finished up on this thing. I've been working on the steering just a little bit each day after work this week, just trying to get things figured out. So let me bring you up to speed with my plan real quick. I'm gonna have to widen out this opening just a little bit, just to make room for the new steering arms. Um, the center section here that I have marked out, this is where the attachment point's gonna be. And with the skis pointed forward, that's the center of travel on this arm. So um, when I'm turning left and right, this is how much movement we're gonna get. Um, so I'm gonna have to weld in some stops probably here and here just to limit the steering in each direction. Um, my plan is to take one of the old heim joints off of the Everest string linkage and then use that as the attachment to uh, one of the stock steering arms off of the ZX chassis. So let's just get to work and see how this all turns out. just got done prepping all these parts that we're gonna need so let's get this put together uh, that's about what it's gonna look like when it's done um, I'll just have this where did it go oh, I lost it oh literally right in front of my face okay yeah so this is just gonna be welded onto the back of here and then we'll have the arm running between the two steering points so let's get that all slapped together You can see what I'm going for here, but I'm kind of starting to lose faith that this is going to work reliably. Um, but I guess let's try and finish it up and just see what happens. I need to cut some kind of a sleeve for this to ride in. Um, the whole thing works great if the force is applied in the right direction. And I mean, that's just not the way that it's actually going to work um, when you're actually using it. So right now I'm just pulling on the ski tips. So the force is in a pulling direction on either side but if I try and push the ski tip see what happens you kind of start the rod lifts up off the bottom and everything like that just goes in whatever direction it wants I think I can kind of combat that by using by using more gas pipe <laughs> as much as I don't want to add more weight um, I'm just gonna weld it to the frame here uh, and then kind of just use it as like I said a sleeve for this to move back and forth in uh, don't know how well that's gonna work. I mean, I hope it works because I don't have too many other ideas But all we can do is just weld it up and try it. We're getting somewhere here I just got to work out the uh, the weak spots and I kind of figured this was going to be an issue, but um, So when I rotate The handlebars you can see how much movement is in that. I mean this should really just be rock-solid And what's happening is that sh thin sheet metal of the belly pan is just flexing so I'm gonna have to cut this open um, this center section open a little bit further and then I mean this is solid tubing here and solid tubing here on both sides so I can just run a cross brace in there um, and full weld it on both ends add some bracing wherever I need to and then drill down through that and bolt this in there and that should be um, a heck of a lot more stable these gas tube sleeves are doing what they're supposed to do now I can grab a, a ski tip and my center centerpiece isn't hopping all over the place anymore so I think that's gonna work out I'm just gonna have to like I said add some some strength here in the middle and then I don't know I might flip this over back here and this little tab re-weld it so then um, this heim joint is also on the bottom like that one is otherwise they have to I don't think there's quite like a, a direct line of the transfer of force and that might be kind of jacking with the 
the way that this is just like hopping around so uh, might have to to do something with that yet i'm hoping that i can make this work so far it's looking like i am going to be able to so i guess let's finish getting this cut out we'll pull all this out uh, add that cross bracing and then try and get that pop back in there and see if that works the way we want it to All right, boys, it's a goddamn mess in here, but I think we finally got it. Finally realized I had to weld in a uh, bracket on the top here for support to stop that shaft rocking back and forth. And then I had to uh, move the sleeves back a little bit to get a little bit more of a swing on the arm, but it seems to be working now. Um, gonna have a severely limited turning radius, but really not too worried about that. I feel like most of the time you're turning by leaning anyway, so I don't think that's gonna be really that big of a deal, but let's uh, take a look at how it works. And I mean, that's with all the suspension components loose and everything yet, and you know, shitty carbides on concrete, so it's only gonna work better in the snow and once I tighten everything up and put new carbides on the skis and everything else, but uh, I think for now it's gonna be good. I just have to get all the welds cleaned up and um, get everything tightened down in place. Still got to full weld the sleeves now that I got them where I want them. I'm sure there's definitely a better way to do that, but I mean, I'm not an engineer. Feel free to let me know what you would have done. Um, I'm definitely open to revising this in the future. Reliability wise, I don't know how well it's going to work or how long it's going to work. I mean, it seems to work well now. Um, just don't know how well it's going to hold up. I suppose it depends on how bad I beat it. And I think for now, we're just going to leave it and see how long it lasts. Just run it till it breaks, I guess. All right, we're moving on from the steering for now. Uh, my neighbor's out shredding sticks, so sorry about the extra noise, but um, got the back end back in the hoist and I have the front arm of the skid unbolted and dropped down to about where it needs to be. Um, I went ahead and made my measurements. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have to add any lengths to those front brackets. Um, I should just be able to uh, drill the new holes, pop them back in there, and it should be good to go. I'll take you underneath there and uh, show you a little bit closer what I'm talking about. So. I don't know how well you can see that, but that was the mounting hole right there, those two holes. And we're dropped down about an inch and a half from there, which is you know about what we need. So uh, we're still well within the length of that stock bracket on the tunnel there. So like I said, we should just be able to punch another hole in there, pop them back in here, um, bolt them in place, and then uh, the front arm should be good to go then. But I am going to add a little bit of width to the bracket, kind of like what I did on the back here. That's the stock bracket. Of course I made a drop bracket, but then that's like, uh, I think it's a half an inch, or 7 16 something like that. Um, just extra width there, because like I said, this was a 16 inch wide tunnel, and the uh, skid came from a stock 15 inch wide skid, so I had to pick up that length, or width somehow, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did back there, uh, up front here. And that should take care of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those rivets out, drop the brackets, and get that taken care of. Again, like all I'm doing here is just maintaining the center to center distance that I need, which on this uh, SC10-3-136, I believe it's 30 inches. Um, at least that's what I came up with. And that's what I had measured out when I originally put it in there. So I'm sticking with 30 inches. Um, and this time I just, I got the ratchet straps in there, just compressing the rear arm yet. And just have the rear arm bolted in place, measured off there, 30 inches to the front. And I mean, it's, you're really not even really measuring it because that distance is already there. All I had to do was measure down about an inch and a half from that front hole. That's all there was to it. So let's get it done. So it turns out there's actually another set of holes down below the ones that were being used. Um, it was bolted into this hole here, 
but I think we're gonna go with this bottom center hole. This distance is just about perfect, so I don't know how I got that lucky. Don't know why these are there, but we might as well just go ahead and use them. And the reason that I'm not using this hole is as that front drops down and pivots, it actually moves back a little bit, like in an arc. So that uh, center hole should be right in the right spot. And this one I managed to drill through when I was putting in the uh, trailing arm brackets on the other side, so I'm gonna weld that up. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get these cleaned up and all prepped and then uh, slap them back in there and should be good to go. Got those all welded up and drilled out and painted. Probably just gonna let those dry overnight and then pick this up again tomorrow. I think I am gonna go ahead and pull the skid though before I call it a night, uh, just cause that's gonna have to come out to get those brackets back in properly and then to, to drill the holes through the tunnel, I wanna drill from the inside out. So I wanna be able to get up underneath there and then drill from, from the underside to the outside. That way I'm not dealing with trying to fight to fit the drill up in between the belly pan and the tunnel. All right, let's get these brackets bolted back in place and the skid tucked back up underneath there. Brackets are bolted back in, drilled through the tunnel. Um, had to notch out more of the trailing arm brackets on both sides just because that's where that's where the uh, mounting hole is going to be now for the front arm of the skid. So I had to just notch that out a little bit just to get everything to fit properly. but. Um, we are all set to go and tuck the skid back up in there and hopefully that new center to center distance works We will find out um, in my experience. You have about an inch leeway with the center to center distance I don't know if anyone's gonna disagree with that or not, but we'll just have to tuck it back up in there and see how she functions <sighs> Okay, man. I don't know what happened, but the day just got away from me the whole weekend just got away from me This all took a little bit longer than I wanted it to and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to touch this thing for like the next three weeks Got obligations with friends and family and stuff like that as much as I want to. I just, you know, can't spend every waking minute out here working on shit. So I had to set the camera down and just rush and get some shit done, but um, I got it done. I wish I could have filmed more. I'm sorry I didn't, wasn't able to film more, but I will do my best to go over everything. You can see, maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but the ride height on the rear is now, it's probably like two or three inches lower than it was. I liked the rake that it had to it. It looked kind of aggressive, but realistically that uh, that skid's just not made for that. As much as I tried to get it to work, it just wasn't gonna happen. It actually took me a while to figure out what I was gonna have to do to uh, get this to work properly. Like the first two configurations that I tried I had major binding and the suspension just wasn't functioning. So um, I did stick with the 30 inch center to center distance and now it seems to be functioning just fine. So let's get into what I actually had to do here then. Um, you know, this is where we were at originally. Original mounting hole dropped about an inch and a half. That's our new mounting hole. And then after I had that bolted in place, the front idlers were up off the ground a little bit. And we had most of the weight resting back here on the rear of the skid. And you can see that I shortened up my drop brackets by about an inch and a half. A little over an inch maybe. So about the amount that we had to drop the front, we had to raise the back. Um, and I kind of anticipated that happening. Uh, if you guys have watched any of the other videos, especially the ones where I first installed the rear skid, uh, I forget who it was, somebody commented on it and said that you know, I had to bring the back up because the front, and this was back when the, the leaf springs were still on the front, the front was too down or too low to the ground, um, you know, the back too high, had too much ski pressure, and you know, it's, at the time, yeah, that's true, that's what was happening. Um, but because I was anticipating doing this, um, you know, adding trailing arms and the shocks and everything to the front, raising the front ride height. Um, I made these extra long, you know, originally we were sitting sitting down about there. Um, you know, I had I left all this extra space up here because I anticipated having to do that, having to raise that back up, and that's exactly what happened. So um, that was just a, a lucky guess by me, I guess, an educated guess, I don't know, but that's exactly what, uh, what ended up happening. So anyway, this is working well now. If you stand back and look at it from a distance, I think it almost looks like the front's a little bit too high, but the engine's not in it right now, so I'm gonna be adding a little bit of weight to it too. So it might settle down a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be putting more than 100 pounds back in up front, but um, I think it'll be enough to kind of settle things a little bit and that should take care of it. But um, I think this is definitely gonna be a lot better for riding. Like that one guy had commented on, on the previous videos, there was way too much ski pressure previously. Um, so this should lighten things up in the front and make it a little bit easier to carve and just make the ride that much better overall. So it didn't quite get as much done as I wanted to this weekend, but still steps in the right direction. Uh, well, I suppose for now that's gonna do it. Uh, it's Sunday night now, I gotta go in, get cleaned up and probably start editing this one. Uh, as always, don't be afraid to let me know how you think I'm doing, if there's anything you think I should change yet before I 
call the project completed or you know get to the painting stage feel free to drop a comment and let me know other than that thank you guys for watching i appreciate it and i guess we'll see you the next time we're wrenching on this thing all right have a good one